Where's my hat? Too late. I'm gonna grab my hat. Too late. Too late. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna come back. Too late, Doc. What? What's it? Praise the Lord. I'm single again. Look at that. <laughs> oh. Yeah, All right, guys. We are live. Uh, had a couple of technical difficulties, but of course, you know, Ooh. guys, this is, that's why this is my favorite couple because, you know, some people just leave when you're about to go live, just go get a hat because they don't want to show um, <coughs> their hair. And I know you guys heard All them. the shine. But guys, we're here. So um, guys, we had a little bit of technical difficulties, but I need you guys to do real quick. Just do what we normally do. Go and share this video to your page, to your friends. I'm giving everybody a second to do that. And then we are going to get started. I'm going to do the same thing. Turn my Me too. ring off on my phone. Oh, that's us. That's us. All right, just share. What well, guys? Once again, we are live with another Husband's Authority. Um, for those of you who are just tuning in for the first time, Husband's Authority is um, presented by Kingdom Relationships. And the goal is to start a conversation on what it means to be a husband. Um, and because, like I always say, sometimes I believe that marriage is in a divorce because we go into it. And as men, sometimes we go into it not knowing what it truly means to be a husband and because God holds us responsible for the success of our marriage. And tonight I have a great couple on. I know you guys always hear me every interview when I say, talk about the couple that my wife and I go to, our accountability couple, our marriage mentors um, that we go to when we have, um, wanna talk and we need some advice in our marriage on, in especially the serious times. And this is that couple. Gerald and Rosalind Thompson. What's going on, hey, guys? Hey, hey, we're good. Hey, what's up? We're good. What's we're up? Good. What's going on? Trying to share. Hey, so, what's up? He's trying to share. So glad to have you guys on tonight. So, guys, um, just just tell us about yourself. Um, what's your marriage story? Woo, woo. Where what's shall up? we start? Uh, we started. <laughs> what, shall, what shall we say to these things? things. God before us. <laughs> um, who want you share? Go ahead. Um, we want, we want from to start the from the beginning, from the beginning, Nate. Yeah, start from, start wherever you guys All want right. to start from. We, um, we've been married for 29 years. 29. 29. 29. Next yes. year will be 30 years. 30. 30. 30. 30 years. We've been married for 29 years. Um, we dated for six years before we got married. Yes. We met at NSU. Yes. NSU. Behold. No, the green Behold. and gold. We met at NSU, um. It was my freshman year, yes. his sophomore year. Yep. Um, two days after I met him, he said, you're going to be my wife. I said, you're crazy. And <laughs> <laughs> here we are. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. So he said, he's crazy. Here you are. Yeah. Yes. So now, go ahead. Now, I know, I know you guys, so I know your background. I know answer to this question but um what was your what were your marriage mentors like growing up mm. well i came from a <laughs> i came from a um solid home with a mom and a dad um pastor g i had a dad family too. home yeah well good <laughs> let me see i'm um, trying to share it i can share it for you i'm sure i'm gonna he's share still trying to share it yeah, he's oh, I did. I did that. I was successful. Oh, he was yes. successful. Okay. You guys we'll see what I go through? <laughs> he, has yeah. a, he has a slight addiction, so Technical go ahead. Addiction. Tell him about your... Um, I, I would say my mentors, um, I would say now impact, I would say the person that had the most impact in my life in terms of marriage at that time was uh, your dad. Oh, yeah. Yeah, my dad. Um, when I met them, coming from a broken, broken home, not by choice, uh, I would just say it was. Um, it wasn't by choice, but it, it was just that there, there were things that took place. 
um, I would just say I didn't really have those examples. Um, I had some examples of what it was, but then I think really I, I, I saw your dad when I, I met uh, Pastor Askew at that time, he had a solid relationship um, with, it was displayed in front of me and a, it was a godly relationship that I saw. Now I saw some other stuff, but it won't, it wasn't anything like um, what I saw in her, her dad. Uh, he was really a, first he was godly. He was really uh, decisive about certain things of the family, how family should be. And um, actually he, he really exhibited quite a bit of that in front of me. So mm -hmm. uh, I think that was the biggest thing. It was her dad and, and their relationship with their family. Their family was so tight. It was just, I was like, wow, what was this? Because I've never seen anything like that before, <laughs> uh, except on TV with the Huxtables at that time. But I was like, what is this? But um, they were really genuine people. And um, the time that I spent with him and I saw, saw how he treated his family, um, it made me, um, it rubbed off for me. It, it was, the, I, was mm -hmm. I would say that more so than anything. Now I had other uh, individuals that I could, but I think that was the most profound example. Okay. Um, okay. When I saw that, yeah. Yeah. So, how did that um, shape you and how you are as a husband today? Well, it shaped it shaped me one because of his example. I was able to see the. Um, I would just say it was a model. How did it shape me? I wanted to pattern my relationship like that. I wanted to, because it, 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 it was working. It was really good. He, he exhibit, like I said before, he exhibit how God was living. Uh, I mean, how to live as a godly man in front of me. And mm -hmm. that's what I saw all the time. I mean, and he was the same way all mm -hmm. the time. This guy would come in and, and he would greet the same way all the time. He was the same way consistent. His no was no. Mm -hmm. um, kind of funny because one time my, my car broke down uh, <laughs> and uh, I went back to see my mom and he, Ross rode with me and I had my, I had my Dodge Coke and my alternator went out on me. And um, it was kind of funny. I called him on the phone. I said, hey, I'm not, I'm serious. My car's broke down. And, um, I, I, the guy's going to look at my car as soon as he looks at the car, we'll be able to come back the next day. He says, oh, no, you won't. <laughs> I said, what? He said, no, you won't. I said, uh, I said, uh, he said, well, you will have her back to today, tonight. Right? I was like, no, I just told you the car is broke down. This is not going to happen. And, um, he went through a dialogue with me and I said, she's going to be fine. She's going to take care of my mom. You know, we're going to have separate rooms and you know, <laughs> things of that nature. But he was like, no, no meant no with him. And uh, he did look, he, he did seem a little tick, tick, boom. You know, <laughs> I was like, I don't know about this guy, you know, uh -huh. but when he could be that way, but uh, he was really solid, man. I mean, he was really solid and it impacted how I now I can tell you this even at that my dad and my mom it was a good relationship um my dad was in the military and so forth and yeah I'm just, I'm just I don't know uh, and the fact is that, that I, I had a good example you know of mm -hmm. strong men I did have a good example of what it was to be a strong man and um it impacted me to to um to treat um her treat Roz and my family to have I had a good model um, so I was able to kind of bring that into the relationship. That's good. And I, I and that, that is true because I see you and I know you and you're like this. I've never seen you like this. You know, your your demeanor, your attitude, everything is is right here. I've never seen you raise your voice. I've never seen you, you know, down. I mean, and I know there are times where you may have to be, but I, I know I've always seen you. Your answer, you answer everything the same way every time. Now, I've seen you up when you preach it. Glory to God. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what does it mean to be a husband? What? <coughs> it, mm -mm. Uh, 
what does it mean to be a husband? I would have to say, well, first of all, I, would, I can't at this day and time, I just can't say, what does it mean just to be a husband? I would have to say, what does it mean in this day and time? What does it mean to be a godly husband? Uh-huh. And, and the first thing is, I would say, for me, it has been get to know who God is. And I know a lot of people don't like to hear that, but that's kept us 29 years. Uh-huh. Yeah, um, that's yeah. been really solid for 29 years. And um, our journey together mm-hmm. has been a great journey. I wouldn't trade it for anything. It's been wonderful, fulfilling. And um, um, I would say that you have to have God first. That's the mm-hmm. first thing. You know, that's the first thing. And being able to take his precepts into your your life let that be your guideline let that be the guideline um that that's the first thing just being a godly get god's get god get god's mind on it first and then walk through it through that way and um that that's i think that's the beginning Mm -hmm. of of, uh, all all of it and that's what has kept me in our relationship um being a husband means first to be a godly husband seek out god first and then uh, learning how to love your spouse the way that she's designed mm-hmm. um understanding who she is first because the, um don't try to love her like somebody else or being a husband a husband a good husband uh, a good spouse a good father um, and all of that's in the word, Nate. I would I would say all of that's in the word, and and it, it's taken me time to to come to the understanding of that's what it's all about. God has laid it out in His word how to be a husband. Yes. Husband, it says, listen, husband, love your wives, your wife, not a, not somebody else. <laughs> love <laughs> your wife. As Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Now, if I do that, that's that's how it is. And it tells her how she should love me. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I know, and then it says, wives submit to your husband, and you say all of that. But women, the hus- the wives, wives are supposed to love the husbands too. Yep. So yeah. I don't know where they get that from. It's like, okay, we just omit. She's just supposed to submit. No, that's not how that works. That's why people get in trouble now. It's like, oh, you submit to me. What? <laughs> what kind of stuff is that? So um, I would just say that that that's the part of it. You know, it's outlining in the word. Yeah. And I, I learned that over a period of time because it was kind of interesting. When my first year of marriage, my first year of marriage, mm. and I was listening, she was like, Oh, mm. Jesus. I was, I was in, <laughs> I was, I was in my tra- transformational period at that time. And I, I was still, you know, recording sessions late night. That's when we were recording late night in the studio. I'm working in multiple jobs and working in the studio, trying to, to become the next uh, Puff Daddy in the studio. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> late night. I was, but here it is. I, I said, you know, I, I, you know, I love my wife. At that, you know, I love her now. But at that moment, I got home one night, and she was like, she was like what is, you know, I mean, she was rolling up on me. I was like, yo, what's up? I, you know, I'm in the studio. That's all I'm in the studio. But I, I, this is what I did. And I know people say, oh, that's just some crazy stuff. But listen to this. I said this, I said, God, help me to love my, show me how to love my wife. Cause I don't know how. That's what I said. Hmm. I said, show me how to love my wife. You know how she's made. I don't know how she's made. So I'm I'm trying to figure this thing out. You know, some I, I fall in the category of some men they catch on a little little slow. I was a little slow. <laughs> Look, she's laughing, but she knows it. I was a little slow. I was like, I'm not catching on to this. This is this is not making too much sense. But then well, you, it, it clicked. You said something started. that I want to go back to real quick. You said that when you said learn how to love your wife, you said it took me a little bit to get that, which what I realized some, a lot of men don't 
like to realize. And I think what, especially Christian men, I think what we do is when we go into marriage, we think we're going to automatically have it. We're going to automatically know it. We're going to automatically know what to do. But we don't realize that it takes time. And, and I believe marriage, you're always learning um, And as a husband. And you say it took time to do that. And I like that because we have to realize that it's going to take us some time to become um, a good husband. I like how you said your first year, the things happen. Like I know with my first year of marriage, y'all know, y'all were there for some of the conversations. You know, my, ah! <laughs> my first year, you know, when I was trying to get it together, you know, because y'all, everybody know Keith's not coming from two different <laughs> backgrounds. So, and we had to merge those backgrounds and it was like, okay, you know, I need to learn this. And uh, I remember the time, I'm afraid to say it, when I went to the, um, remember I went to the Niners game and she was sick and she said go and I didn't realize that go means no. <laughs> and, you know, and yeah, yeah. So, go means stay. I was, yeah, go means stay. You know, I was like, oh my God. I had to call y'all be like, what do I do? And so, but we're still learning. But Roz, I want to ask you and from a wife's well, point of the view, what does it mean to be a husband? I don't know because I'm a wife. You know, <laughs> I'm being funny. I'm being funny. Um, I I would say to be a husband. Um, what so what my I'll set what my expectations are or have yeah. been. Um, I know for me a few things I look look for. Um, was somebody that's strong. You know, and I don't mean physically strong, but um, someone who could make a decision. You know, some uh, you know, a man who could make a decision. Someone who affirms me. Um, and I, I think, in just in the years of our marriage, I have finally, after twenty nine years, recognized and realized that I am the weaker vessel. I have, you know, I don't, I don't argue that point at all. Um, and weaker in that there are things that, you know, I deal with that I, I look to him, you know, to help me or look to him to pray for me or look to him to affirm me. Um, so I would, I would say, you know, someone who's strong can make decisions, um, who's open to discuss things together, you know, a great communicator, um, someone who loves me for who I am, and not trying, and I'll say this, in the 29 years we've been married, Gerald has never tried to push me to be someone that I'm not. And he's never tried to compare me with any other woman or, you know, anything like that. So um, I say for me, for a husband, um, you know, solid, able to make decisions, able to, you know, communicate well, able to, um, you know, bring in finances. That was important to me. Um, and, and someone to make me feel safe, especially now in the day and time we're living in, all these unprecedented things that are going on. Um, but someone that I can go to sleep at night and I feel safe, or I can go to work and come home knowing that, you know, I have my husband, um, someone to talk to, someone to communicate with. So I mean, it's a smorgasbord of stuff that I could name off, but <laughs> just those few are what were important to me or are important to me. Okay. So guys, what's the best, Gerald, what's the best part of being a husband? Her. Wrong question. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, I think the best part is um, being a husband, um, the relationship. I think the bottom line, I, I told her today, it was really, I said, you know what? I love when you come home. Mm. I just, 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 it's just a, uh-oh. Oh. He said to move today. Uh-oh. <laughs> you know, honestly, it's just like, you know, in this time that we're living in right now, you know, we both have our jobs, the things that we do. And uh, it's always good to come home to see her smile or to see her come home. And um, she smiled. <laughs> She's smiling. And um, it's just um, it, the wonderful part is just just that I have someone that I know that loves me, mm -hmm. and I love them. And it's it's equal. It's um, 
it's a partnership. I look at the things that we've accomplished together and it's, it's not really that, it's just like, it's just a relationship. I think the biggest thing is the, um, the relationship that we have. <clears throat> and um, I think that that's the, one of the biggest things is her. Um, she, she makes it, she makes me, um, um, it's just, just been a lot. It's just speechless. Yeah. <laughs> She just makes me weak in my knees. I can hardly speak. <laughs> <laughs> you lose our control. So, Ross, what's the best part of having a husband? Yeah, she. she um, okay, go ahead. Him. The best part of having a husband is is really, um, wow. Just having honestly, just having a friend. You know, okay. some somebody to talk to. Mm -hmm. Um, somebody to share how you feel. Um. Someone that actually, and I mean, everybody may not agree with this, tell you you're a little off, you know, sometimes someone to kind of, you know, somebody who can reel you in and help you keep yourself balanced. Um, but I think most of all, I would sum it up to say just having a friend. Mm -hmm. Okay. With benefits. <laughs> with benefits. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> right, benefits. right. <laughs> yeah, so you, um, you said something that you said someone to tell you when you're off. So yeah. how does... Now that's our question on it, but you said, how do, how do we tell you that you're off without saying the wrong words? Mm. Well, tread softly. Tread <laughs> well, I think it's, you know, and Gerald said it best, and we both do this. Um, we literally depend on Holy Spirit. And I, you know, I know people say, well, you know, being super, no, 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 no. We depend on Holy Spirit yes. to show us how to relate to communicate, to bring up things. Um, I, and I'll tell anybody, I mean, I've had times I could be steaming mad at him. I mean, steam, I mean, mad, I mean, Norfolk mad, you know, Norfolk mad. <laughs> and I'm so mad, he, you know, he in route home, we've had a couple of times he's in route home, I'm so mad. You know, I took my shower, I'm in the bed, I'm mad, but I'm like, when he come in here, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna blast him. And I've had Holy Spirit say to me, girl, keep your mouth closed. Mm. And, and, I'm, and I'm, mm. I'm on fire, like Jeremiah, shut up in my bones fire. Uh, um, and um, that's funny too, because there are times too, I would, uh, you know, I've, I've been over like up here. Yeah. Like a pressure cooker, you know, I'm ready to go like, ah! He was but, asking me though, but I just have, I know you know, but I want to make sure you know. Okay. No. <laughs> okay. So anyway, but you know, but we we both do that. But mm -hmm. I, it it has to you you have to come to a point that you're willing and open mm -hmm. to take someone's feedback, you know, or to take your husband or your spouse and hey, you know, you were wrong. That you know that wasn't right. That comes with a lot of maturity and listen, and it comes with trust okay. because if somebody coming at me, you know, like kids say, you know, you're throwing shade and I see that your life ain't, you know, how are you going to tell me and you still, but with him, because I, and it, it took Nate, it took years. It wasn't just like, uh, just happened yesterday. It took probably about 10 or 12 years for me to kind of settle down to hear him when he's talking, you know, or to say, hey, Raj, you know, nope, we're not gonna do it. Nope, you're off, you know, you're a little off. That takes time, not necessarily, it does take time for him to get to a point that he can address me with that. But if I sit and I'm constantly so hardcore that I keep him in this place of fear, you know, if I, you know, if I, um, if I, if I say something, you know, she, she might not give me no love in the night, you know, or anything like that, but it, it, it's, it's, but it's more so on me. I have to settle in my heart that, okay, God, I'm not right all the time. You know, there are things that I can say and be a little sharp or, you know, be inconsiderate. <laughs> um, but that, that's something in my own heart that I have to work on, but I'm, I, you know, now, and we, we still, you know, we don't do a bunch of screaming and yelling, but we disagree sometimes. Mm -hmm. And in those cases, I have to listen, 
And it is a submission to him, but it's also a submission to God. God, I'm right. going to submit to you and allow him to speak, you know, you to speak through him, you know, and I'm in, I'm in an awkward position because he ain't just my husband, he's my pastor too. Um, so, you know, we deal with all of that, but it's a yielding. It's a, it's a, it's a straight up yielding to God and then just yielding to wanting, wanting to have a better marriage. And if it's constant, I mean, we do it. I'll tell him in a heartbeat, I don't like that, you know, or you did X, Y, Z. I ain't like that. You know, he'll tell him in a heartbeat, you know, I like Dick Graven. That's, that's, that's our, our little, yes. one of our little things that Thick we gravy. know, you know, but, and that Dick Graven is light, but that's, that's one of those things. And we, we are constantly learning, you know, what the person like, what they don't like. He knows me. He knows there are certain things that's going to set me off in a heartbeat versa. and vice versa. I know things is going to set him off, but it, it, it takes time. But we always say this, even with the people that we are um, counseling, we say this, look, if you listen to us, it won't take you 10, 15 years yes. to Amen. learn how to get along right. and, you know, to do that. It, you know, that mentorship, wherever it's coming from. But it's when I when I say a little off, you know, I raise my hand. I know that there have been times, will be times, are times right now that I could be a little off. But the number one thing is I trust that he loves me enough to tell me I'm wrong and that I love him enough to accept that, yep, yeah, I'm wrong. And, and then can I add to this? You, it's how you say it. It's yeah. always how you say it. Yeah. Um, you can't just go at someone and just charge and like, I'm right. I'm, you know, I mean, obviously that's an argument. Right. That's, that's, a, that's a train ready to crash or plane ready to crash. So that, that's not even, and, 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 and I've learned that even over the years, even having conversations with Roz when, when we're in um, situations, heated moments, and we've had heated moments mm -hmm. i know it doesn't look like it or what have you but i'm from Norfolk. yeah and, and i'm i'm from cali <laughs> anyway <laughs> so the fact is that I, I think that there's it's a how to, how you speak to certain yeah. people you can't just go at everybody just right. running at. i mean it's like i'm right i'm right you know i'm the man i'm the man you know it's like what what is that going to pr prove, you know? Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we live by this one principle where I, I, you know, when we were talking one time before and I think we were getting a, a, a argument or she was, we were having a conversation heated moment. This was early on in our, our days. And I, I told her, I said, I'm not your enemy. Yeah. Really? You know, I told her, I said, I'm not your enemy. We're on the same we're team. We're on the same team. <laughs> yeah, literally on the same team, New same stuff. uniform, all yes. fighting each other. Yeah. And, and that, that, that doesn't and I think make that sense. Helped. And yeah, I think it, that really helped at that moment. Yeah. That's good. So that go that actually leads to my next question. How important are a husband's words to his wife? Um, you can either build her up or de destroy. You know, the scriptures are, you know, they're correct when it says death of life and the power of the tongue. Um, if you say pleasant words, you receive um, the, the harvest of pleasant words. Mm -hmm. um, so it's important that what I say, what I say in the house, how I am in the house, this is why I always try to check my heart because I don't want to make the household toxic because mm. I can come in yeah, and good. by being the male, by being the head of the house, mm -hmm. when I walk in, and um, we're partners in life, but the fact is, when if I walk in and I'm demonstrative in terms of coming in and going at her and yelling and fussing, I'm not setting a good good example. First of all, for my son or my daughter, yeah. they're confused because that's they know that's not how I, I respond. So I speak words to build her up, mm -hmm. um, to promote her, um, to affirm her as she stated before um to to constantly push her forward um with kind words pleasant words um if you want a pleasant household you speak pleasant words yep. if you want a nasty household speak nasty words mm -hmm. um it's not difficult for a person to try to defend themselves when you speak in negative 
And when you come in, your house, your home should be that place of solitude, you know, and peace. And peace. So when you walk in, it's like it should be peace. And you leave all your junk outside. You can pick it up if you go back out and go back to work if you want to. But the fact is, when I come in, I try to speak words to encourage her uh, in terms of her destiny, because God's got a pur purpose for her. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm, I'm speaking life to her destiny. Yeah. And it's key. It's key that you said that, because uh, when I first started doing this, I was studying. And you know how they say they say the wife makes makes the house a home. And. Mm -hmm. What I've learned is that it's what you said is the husband's words that makes the house the home because we set the tone. And the wife, they do their job of, of I, don't, I don't like saying job, but they do that part of making it feel mm -hmm. like home, yeah. making it a uh, uh, family home. But the husband's, were our words set the tone and the atmosphere of our home. Just like you said, you could come in, if you come in, you're demonstrative or you're just yelling at everybody. And if I came in the house and I'm yelling at Keisha, sit your tail down, blah, blah, blah. Then... You're going to get slapped. <laughs> <laughs> Keisha's going Keisha to Keisha, be calling me saying, Keisha Rise. Like, I just, she's going to be calling and say, Rise, I just knocked him out like, with that pan and he's on the floor. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, y'all probably wouldn't hear from me for a while, but no, oh, I'm talking me. like this to you, but. Uh, <laughs> But if I did that, if if my wife wasn't, the, I'm going to say this, if my wife wasn't the strong woman that she is, mm -hmm. you know, then I would probably, it would, it would break her, you know, and, and even now, if I did that, it would still do something to our house. But yeah. that our, our words set the tone. We could be our, a house of peace and harmony or a house of negativity. Yeah. That's why I see a lot of um, women that you know they may be there and they're doing what the husband say but in her heart she's like broken and she's timid and she's yeah. not there so Roz what does his words mean to you how important um, are his words to you they're very important and I, I said before you know he does a lot of affirming um uh, which I love I need that's just my makeup um but he Pastor Jen, you said it before. He, I love that he's the same way all the time. He speaks the same way all the time. Um, somebody said to me one time, they were like, is Pastor Jen like that all the time? You know, he's always hyper and, you know, confessing and blah, blah, blah. She's like, girl, um, a friend of mine, she said, I don't know how you can take that every day. I'm like, I would take that over somebody cussing me out, <laughs> throwing me down right. the stairs you know, calling me names outside of my own name, but it's important to me because it does, it sets the tone for our house. Now I can set how it looks, the paint, the dishes, mm -hmm. the food I cooked today, all of that. But there, there are certain things, even with my kids, they're, well, kids, they're grown ups, but even with them, there are things that he says to them or can say to them. And sometimes I'm just in the distance listening but that even puts like a little warm spot in my heart because he's telling Chelsea, you know, girl, look, you can do this. I know you can do it. Or he's telling G, hey, man, you know, come on, you man up. You got to do X, Y, Z. Um, and that makes me feel good. But but his his words that come out of his mouth are so profound, so needed, you know, I, you know, and then I have this thing. If he go into this, his little silent moment. And he ain't mad or nothing, but sometimes if he's, you know, listening to God on something or if he's fasting or praying or something and I can't hear his voice, it, it bothers me, you know, if I, when I can't hear his voice or even during the course of the day, sometimes I'm having awful days sometimes. I mean, we're not awful, but just challenging days sometimes. And he'll just pick up and say, hey, you all right? You having a good day? You doing good? And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, what you need? Because I'm at work. No, he's like, no, no, no. I was just calling to check on you, see how you were doing. And I'm like, shoot, I can do another eight hours with that. Woo, just like just for those words. Yeah, yeah. Just, just, just words. And, and again, he's not a fusser. He's not a yeller. Um, does he get firm sometimes? Yeah, but I mean, he's, he's just, just to hear his voice is enough to, 
make me weak in my knees. <laughs> Hercules, Hercules, Hercules. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. So, and that is true because, like, with 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 Pastor G, it's like I I didn't even know in times when he was upset. Well, his he never changed his tone, and it's just yeah. like man, and his his tone is still the same. And even when he mad, I don't know how you do it, man, but uh, you know, I, I try to emulate pray. you on that. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I try to pray that thing. I'm like, boy. Now, I, now I can tell you, I have heard times, not with me, but when he's dealing with with the two adults that live in our house, mm. and he he can raise his voice, and it sounds like the rapture taking place. <laughs> but that's needed in that moment. Yeah, but yeah. He's, yeah. The, his word, his words are extremely important to me. Okay, that's good. That's good. So, what does it mean to be faithful? Ooh, faithful, faithful, faithful. is our God. Um, okay. Um, what does it mean to be faithful, or how do you continue to be faithful? No, he said. What does it mean <laughs> to said, be faithful? He said, "What does it mean? How you gonna change the man questions on?" Right. Yeah. Go you know, hijack my interview. <laughs> Answer the question, man. <laughs> he going first with me. You want her to go first? Raj, you go first. Yeah, you know go hers, first, Raj. You know her is going to be all straight, and I'm going to go all the way around the Marbury Bush. To come me, back. faithful is what I said at the altar. Woo! And I ain't, I ain't coming off of what I said at the altar. The same uh, March 15th, 1991 at 11 o'clock a.m. Yes. I made my vows to him. Yep, you had on that blue dress. With that Y'all got baby. married early. Yeah, we did. We um, man, that was something else too. We ain't tell you about that part. He yeah. was working the night shift. I was working the night he shift. He had just gotten off the next morning, and yeah. yeah. Anyway, but anyway, it's <laughs> it's what I said at the altar. My my commitment, and I use a different word. The covenant that I made was that hey, until death. Do we part? I ain't going nowhere. I told him he laughs at me, but I'm like, you try to leave me if you want to. I'm going with y'all because um, <laughs> she ain't gonna know what to do with you. She gonna need some instructions. I'm, but, going, I'm going with y'all too. No, I'm just yeah. <laughs> but um, to me, it's faithful means that I am faithful to him, to him only. Um, no other man. No, uh, you know, nowadays no other woman. Crazy stuff. <laughs> um, mm. But you know. I am committed and I'm in covenant with him. I'm not leaving him. Um, I trust him completely. Um, I admire who he is. No one else can catch my eye. Mm. No one else. He's so silly. Mm. See, and I try to be serious. See? <laughs> but to me, it's, it's exactly what I said at the altar. The covenant I made 29 years ago was that till death, do we part that I'm sticking in it, I'm staying in it. And we, you know, he's, we talk um, about where we are now, nowhere. We were, we never anticipated or expected to be, you know, number one, probably married this long. Um, but, you know, the commitment and the covenant, I think covenant is, is the word that I really want to use. The covenant that I made 29 years ago, I'm not coming off of that. And I'm constantly making sure that I'm doing my part. I'm That's doing my good. part. I don't put all of the pressure on him to do anything. It's a partnership. It's a covenant. And that's that's where I am. That's where my my definition of faithful. Love it. Love it. Come wow. On well, uh, um, he got when I think of the stars. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> Oh my God, I, I, I have to agree. I would have to say it's all about a covenant. Um, when you look at it, what has kept us through this whole thing is what we said. And I truly believe that that's what I said. Ooh, looking at them eyes, boy, pretty brown eyes. <laughs> you know, I, okay. Anyway. He is so silly. All right, anyway, them brown eyes, boy. Woo, something about them <laughs> eyes. All right, okay. Uh, faithful, 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 faithful. Okay. Um, it's a covenant. Uh, I think that the fact is that this is what I said. This is what I would, I'm going to do. Um, 
there were times that I think even in that part of being faithful, <laughs> I told you, man, when I started out, I didn't really have a clue what was going on. <laughs> I didn't really know. But I, you know, I grew into it. But my the faithful part for me was the fact that I realized what the covenant was about. And it wasn't about um, if you get mad, you leave, or I get mm -hmm. mad, I leave. I had to mm -hmm. learn that. Yep. Um, you know, we, we, we talk about their five C's of marriage and we deal with, you know, th those are, one of them is uh, the compromise and we had to compromise. I had to learn how to compromise. She had to learn how to compromise. And in, the, in that faithfulness is being consistent in yep. spite of, yep. is being consistent um, regardless what she says, what she does, um, how it makes me feel. Um, regardless, um, and, that, and that goes back to um, 1 Corinthians 13, where it talks about love. Um, it's not puffed up. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seek after its own, it seeks after others' good. Um, I think it's um, more of me having to, uh, it's unconditional. It's like when I got into this, my faithfulness has been unconditional just like it. And one of my drives, it wasn't the fact that I was saying that, you know, because my parents were divorced, I was saying that I'm going to stay married regardless of what that, but I did say that, I, you know, um, I, I said that, no, I said, when I get married, I'm going to get married. That's what I'm, mm -hmm. that's like, mm -hmm. I'm not supposed to have five and six. I'm like, <coughs> all right, well, what am I doing that for? Um, right. This is who I said I was going to marry. And uh, I said, I, I did it. And I did it. And, and the faithfulness, basically, faithfulness to me is staying true to your word, your, your word that you said, yeah. and stay with it until the end. You stay with it until the end. That's it's good. Yeah. I love it. Took me back with that main condition. Now I'm about to uh, go pop. I know. That's your, that's your group. That's <laughs> you your know group. it. You know yeah. it. Stokely. That's your man right there. <laughs> main condition. Yeah. So, um, yeah. What's a marriage success tip? Either one of you guys can answer. What's a marriage success tip? Out with the five C's. No. No. I was I gonna ask you about that too. The five C's. Go ahead, Ross. Go ahead. That, that, um, I would say the marriage successful tip is communication. That's one of the C's. Communi okay. I mean. I remember when we first got married, just real quick, um, when we first got married, I would get mad and I could like not talk to him for like two or three days. Yeah. Just, I ain't saying nothing. And that irked me. And, and she, and she knew it. I knew it. She knew it. I knew it. She knew that was, that but was like, for he, her not talking to me was going to be like, oh. I, but look, and that's still true today, but I, we don't, it don't last two or three days. It no. might last two or three minutes. Yep. That's like, but, I know what um, you're doing. But <laughs> I would, I would. I could like not talk to him for like two, you know, we have basic, you know, okay, so what's on your agenda today? I got to go to work, then I'm going to the store, come home. And that's it. We ain't having no, no laughs, no funny dialogue, no. Mm -mm. Um, but one day I remember he came to me and he said, I know you're not talking to me, but how am I going to ever know what's wrong with you if you don't communicate? Mm -hmm. That there, that there. There you go. <laughs> open the floodgates. And so he never, I think that's been maybe at least 25 years ago. He's never had to worry about or wonder what's wrong with Ross, you know, and I, I pick and choose, not pick and choose, but I, I know now when to communicate, what's the best time. If something's made me upset, I know when to do it, but he never, Gerald Eugene Thompson never has to worry about what's going on in my mind or what I'm thinking <laughs> no. because I'm going to let, I'm going to tell him. And, and it's not, it's not like no. no mean, nasty, sarcastic. You know, I could just simply say, hey, you remember yesterday when you did such and such and such? Um, next time, can we do that a little different? Or when you volunteer me to go do something for X, Y, Z, next time, can you check in with me? So I think communication is key. I'm always telling him where I am, how I'm feeling, uh, what's up, or even asking him, you know, sometimes you good, you know, it ain't all about me all the time, but I just think communication is the no, probably one of the five yeah. C's. It may one not five. be the number one, but 
for me, that that's where that's a success tip yes. for me. Yes. Okay. How about you? Yeah, communication is is really that um, was mine, but it's still the same. But that was mine. <laughs> You got to come up with another compromise. One. There we go. Compromise. So, so let me ask you, what are the five so, C's? Well, that's one I was about to tell you. That was one of the, one of the C's. Oh, I mean, already, I cut you off. I'm sorry. She took the took the one of the C's. Communication is one of them. Go ahead. Compromise. You know, being able to compromise, realizing that it's not all about you. It's not selfishness. You can't be all selfish. It's just, it can't be all about you all the time. You know that we were watching. She wanted to watch 1917. Now, is it good? Let me I tell you. I thought it was. I, I think it's really a great movie. Um, the soundtrack, oh my goodness. The music score, and oh my goodness. The string arrangement, amazing. Okay, yeah. compromise. compromise. Oh, he is communicating musically. Two musicians communicate. Yeah, yeah, we communicate. <laughs> no, anyway, <laughs> she, she wanted to watch 1917. I did not want to watch that at the time we're in right now. I was like, Roz, I don't want to watch that right now. But I said, okay, I had to compromise. And I sat down and I watched it. I watched it and, and it was really good. It was a good movie. I want to watch it. Now, and mm -hmm. compromise, okay, compromise, that's one of them. Communication, compromise. compromise. Cash. Cash, got to have money. Oh, no, not just having money. You, whoever's good with the money need to be dealing with the money. money. Yeah, and no, you don't need to be spending out all your money. You need to know how to do right with the money, and that's the bottom line. If you're not going to do right with the money, then somebody's going to be upset. Normally, it's the money that's people mad about. It's like I can't go, I can't do this, I can't do that. That's that's the money part. That's the problem. Y'all, y'all know my wife. She only about the money. She's oh, yeah. the budget queen. Oh yes, <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. People say, oh, it's about love. Oh, I love you. I love you. Where it ain't money. Oh, so we got some issue. Yeah. <laughs> Where the money? At? So show me the money. All right. So cash. So that's the no. What did you did? It, did you do communication? One? Compromise. Cash. Come on, man. What? That's all you got. You no, get got three. Two Tune in for the next time. I, I got to give you one more, and that that that's the uh, what's that number four? Number four is what? Coochie. See, they, I was trying to keep you. And what's number five? Hold on. Hold on. That, that's really number four? We got, that's number four. We got, you got to talk about it. Okay. Okay. That's the thing is, because if you're in marriage, right? And you in marriage and ain't marriage, and if you ain't married, <laughs> be real. That's true. That's, that's I, true. I, got, I mean, if you, if there's, no, if it, oh, let's see, I'm trying to be political. Because I know this is your show, and this is a PG version of your show. Now, I'll just, I'll, let me jump in, because so it Help. won't be sideways, because sometimes people yeah, think yeah. that that's all men talk about. No. But we firmly believe, um, and even when we do counseling, that intimacy um, and sexual intercourse with your spouse, that's important. That is yes. important. It it's is. important. And that's why if it wasn't important, this I feel, if it wasn't important, it wouldn't be spoken of in the Bible. You know, and I, right. I know, you know, from sometimes from a woman's perspective, we're tired, we're sleepy, you know, we just don't, you know, you don't feel it. but it's important and it's important on both ends. Um that's right. And go ahead. And so we we believe in that. And I, I'll say, you know, not even just the sex or whatever, but we we hold hands. We touch yeah. a feeling, you know, we hug, we kiss. That's important. And if you lose that, you're losing a big part of your marriage because yes. it's important. I Look, I need someone to rub my back or to rub my feet or for me to <laughs> rub his shoulders. We, we believe in that. And we got we're licensed to we're licensed to do that. I got that. a license. Now. And so you license. know, and because we do, and, and you know, I don't know where married couples have come from now. I'm like, you're you're not biblically following God's plan. He created this for married couples mm -hmm. to enjoy. And, and, and so, yeah. you know, it, it's it's important. And you know, he's gonna harp on the coochie. I'm, I, I'm, I'm talking saying, about the intimacy part. Well, well I, that's what I was talking about. You know, when I say that, I'm, I make light of that and say, oh, that yeah. Part, but, but that is a part of it. It's a big part. And what's of number it. five? Hold on, let me finish this because you had your part with that. I had okay, to add my. And, and, and people, listen to this. I'm just saying, <laughs> if you're out there, you're listening and you, you're thinking about marriage, 
this is a big part of it. Yeah. So don't, you know, people, it's kind of interesting. They do, they, they do that outside of the marriage and then they come back into marriage and, and act like do that, it. like you're not supposed to be doing that. Yeah. It's like, yeah. no, I can't do it. And then you don't, you can't hold that. Uh, if you're mad, it's like, well, well, I'm a, I'm gonna use this against you. I'm a, mm -hmm. I'm gonna hold this. Can't do that. You know, it's like, well, no, we, we ain't, no, I got this. And, you know, you can't do that. Mm -mm. Yeah. I mean, you know, you can't, you just, never mind. That's well, another this conversation. Is, this is what we're talking about. This is, this is what, this is what this is about. I mean, you guys are good with this because this is about, it's, it's a husband's authority, but you can't be a husband if you're not married. So we got to talk. Oh, and yeah, you said right. something. Um, and I like that. I like how you guys went into this, this C. I'm going to get to the other, other C in a second. Then we're going to, Get to the last question, but um, because what I found out is that a lot of men go into marriage thinking that they're going to be having sex every day, all the time. So then, when it doesn't happen, then they step out because two they look at the it throw. because two, two, two shots, shots to the throat, two shots. To the <laughs> because throw. when 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 they're out there, when they're out there playing the field before they get married, they're single. It's like all the time, every yeah. time. You know, they can call up a chick every night, call up a chick. But then when they get married, you got this one woman, and she may yeah. not feel like it for maybe three days in a row, and you can't get mad. My God. I'm just saying, you know, you but you can't get play. mad. You can't get mad and say, okay, she's not giving it to me. So I'm going, some men turn to porn, some men turn to other women. Yeah, right. And yeah. that can destroy your marriage quicker than anything else. Yeah. Let me that, help. Go ahead. I have to tell you, that's scriptural. And I and I gotta tell you, it tells you if you read in, 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 in the Bible, it tells you that you're not she's not supposed to um she's withhold. not supposed to withhold mm -hmm. uh do diligence do whatever <laughs> do what is it? benevolence do benevolence i thought it was due diligence <laughs> do benevolence Look, you can be like, diligent dude, with what you're not, doing listen, you know listen you, yeah she's not supposed to withhold me, uh, my my needs sexual needs and i'm not supposed to withhold anything from her and and, and that's how it's supposed to be. and it tells us this it says that less satan yeah comes in yep mm -hmm. it tells you that now that's that's a principle yeah and it tells you that don't don't hold because if, if you if she if she holds back then i have a time where i'm isolated oh, and it's wow. like or i'm vulnerable at yep. that time and then now i'm like oh wait a minute well what 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 to do mm -hmm. you know it's like well you know then some guys they revert back to what they used to do yeah and they yeah. it's like well i'm good but no, that's not how it's supposed to be, or vice versa. Right. So you, you got to think about that. That That's a biblical principle in there. And a lot of couples, they get in trouble behind that because they don't understand that. The devil is just waiting. He's like, okay, don't. So what do you say to that guy? What do you say to the guy who's thinking like that? You know, what do you say to the guy who's gone, gone to marriage and then his, he's not, it, it's not like he used to be when he was out there in the world? I've, 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 um, I've counseled a young man about that. Um, before and it's like what do you say to him that because he's used to before he got married he's getting it all the time then when you get married it's not all the time like he used to how what do you say to him what advice do you give him to be able to stay in his marriage and be able to deal with that well he's gonna have to adjust that like i said that's gonna go back to the compromise you have to compromise you know she's gonna be tired sometimes she, yeah. if yeah. she's working your wife she's working she's out and then it's like, okay, she works too, and she's yeah. tired. She's a she's human. Right. It's like she's not a machine. And then the, and, and the sad thing about it, the stuff that he probably watched or did this or whatever before she um, before he was married, that's TV. You know, that stuff that that ain't real. TV. Right. <laughs> you know? That stuff ain't real. That ain't real. So that's not realistic. So he has to learn someone would probably have to talk to him about that, you know, before yeah. he enters into um, marriage and say, hey, you look, God, that ain't gonna be like that all the time. Yeah. And you need to adjust and understand that, are you gonna stay committed? Right. Even when these times, when you got some some dry patches, you know, it's like, go pray. Mm -hmm. You know, yep. if, if, if it's that time of the month, fast, fast, get, get out, fast three days or get whatever. And then when she ready, you, hey, she gonna be ready, you know, good to go.
do something else. I'm <laughs> just saying, but that has to be counseled. That person has to be taught yeah. and real to bring into the realization yeah. of the compromise in the relationship. Right. Okay. And uh, so, I, yeah. yeah. Last last question. It was yeah. it's not a question. Um, but at this time, what I like to do, Jesus, is for you. What I like to do for the men okay. is this is your moment, about 60 seconds. Whatever, whatever you want to say on, to the husband. Hold on. Let me Roz has on a seconds. timer. <laughs> whatever ahead, you whatever you want to say to husbands out there, whether if you want to pray for them, if you want to prophesy, if you want to give a piece of advice, God, just take this time, just talk to the husbands out there. The last thing you want to say to them before we end this this live. Okay, I would say to the husbands out there, you know, find you a good mentor. First of all, in marriage, make sure you find a good mentor, some a godly mentor. Yes. Somebody that you will respect, someone that you will listen to and follow. And, and listen, don't just find a godly man, find a godly couple. Make yes. sure you see that because yes. if she's not happy. This guy can be faking and faking the funk, telling you all this and other stuff, but he himself doesn't live it out. Mm -hmm. So he himself is a castaway. So find a good mentoring relationship before you enter it and then get counseling, get sound counseling in the relationship before you do this, because this is real. And um, that, that, that's I would say that before you enter into it and, and read, find some there's some there's good material. Why are you? There's a lot of material out here and there's good material that will help you in your relationship, you know, even with your finances, even in with your relationships, uh, how to, you know, his needs and her needs. That's a good book. I would probably put <laughs> put down anyway. Stop that thing. Anyway, his needs and her needs. See, now you can't even stop it. <laughs> Go ahead. See? She, she and, broke um, it. She broke but it. But anyways, I, I would say that that's so important. Nate, I would say that, you know, don't don't go into this blind sided. Some people, and that's why a lot of couples are not staying together because they're just going in like, oh, I'm just gonna go get married. Oh, this is this is a good thing to do. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Right. You know? So you 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 should be seek counsel before you enter into that. And um, and then also um, you know, enjoy it, man. That's the biggest thing. If you if you are married, if you're married to your spouse, stay on that that honeymoon for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Amen. Ooh, that's 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 what I'm gonna have. Corona. There ain't Look. no corona in this place. Look, I'm gonna have to be uh, practicing social, social distance at home. Hey, I'm gonna have to have that last thing you said was perfect. I'm not going further because we gotta go, but I may have to have you guys on one day just to talk about that, about that staying on the honeymoon throughout your marriage. That may be a good um, thing to have you guys on again. I definitely want to have you guys on again. Thank you guys. As You're always, welcome. you know, Keisha and I love you. We thank you guys for being our marriage uh, mentors. Um, I can give, give you the last C, but we'll you can oh. see that later. I can see that later. All right, what's the last C? Go ahead. Just give it to us no, real quick. We ended no? this. <laughs> I, we can't give you the last I gotta keep the last C. Well, guys, we'll, we'll, we'll do it. Thanks for having thank us. Thank you. We'll, guys, thank you guys for watching. We'll do another live with them so we can get the last C. Matter of fact, we may do a live talking about the five C's. If you guys want us to do a live with them talking about the five C's, just comment on this video, comment in the comment section, and say, I want the five C's. And then I'll reach out to them and we'll set up a time to do a live talking about the five C's. All right, guys, thank you right. for coming on. Well, thank you, Nick. Guys, thank you guys for watching as always. Um, first, guys, what's your church website? Where can they go to, to, to find, follow you guys? Uh, www.kemministry, K E M ministries.org, or you can um, visit us whenever this stuff blows over at 645 Mayflower Road in the city of Norfolk, Virginia, or you can check us out on our Facebook page. Yeah. King yeah, Ministry. 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 King Ministry. Guys, I guarantee you will be blessed if you follow them. Guys, thanks for watching again. Yep. I love you. Of course, go to kingrelationships.org um, to our YouTube page to see this video again. Um, let us know what you want to talk about. Again, if you want us to do a live about the five C's, just comment and say, I want the five C's, and I'll reach out to them, and we'll set that up again. Thank you guys for joining. Until next week, yep. be victorious. All right. All right. Bye. Bye.